So we need to... I don't know, I'm standing uh, in a, this much of water, and one wave comes, though it's my plan to stand there, but the water makes me to move slightly here and there. If I'm further deep into the sea, the, the problem is bigger. Sometimes the problem is such a, bi such a big that I encounter such kind of situation. This is my daughter, this is my son, and it's myself. So there will be a reason, there will be a, some uncertainty, there will be some forces which will try to change what you have thought. And we have been taught a technique called project evaluation review technique, which can help us to deal with such kind of situations. So I'm just going to you know, uh, do a small flashback. Most of you will be knowing these concepts, but just to give a, ba a, a backdrop for this technique. So we do receive input in the form of a three Ds, I, I normally tell, description, dependency, and duration. To my student, I tell, if you don't understand all these three, three Ds, come to the fourth D, that's a Dinesh Panchal. I'll help you out how to put all these things in the form of a <coughs> visual. So we prepare something called a network diagram. So we have a description, we have a dependencies, and we have durations. But in this network diagram, all the three Ds are, have been deterministic, it's fixed. And we safely assume that the things will roll out, the things will evolve exactly the way it has been put on this, to this diagram. But in the reality, it doesn't. In the reality, the waves keeps on coming. The waves will come from this side, from this side, from this side, and from this side, and they'll keep on changing the plan what we have prepared. We also know how to work out the end dates for our project based on those techniques, that's called CPM method. So let's say in this project, we safely calculated that the project will finish in 47th week. We committed to our client. We had agreement. If we are delayed by one week, there will be a penalty of 0.5% of the contract value. Then what happens? Five weeks, if the wave is uh, 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 unfavorable to us, we may finish in seven weeks. Now, friends, can you tell me if this is the case, what is the probability that the project will be finished in six weeks? The project will be finished in 47 weeks. Which one? Central, yeah. What is the probability that project will be finished in 47 weeks with these numbers? Just to help you out, to interpret these numbers, in the part we say the optimistic scenario that 70% chance that this web and through a couple of my friends that is that we have a software which can tell us these percentages if, if we have been provided with such kind of durations. Because when we ask to the resource manager or the people who are going to execute those tasks that how many weeks you need, normally the first answer we get is around four to around five to seven weeks. But since we need to put only one number, either in Primavera or in MS Project or a feature software you use, because we have one, only one column for the duration. So we force that person, please give me one number. Don't say five to seven weeks. Say me either five or six or seven or 6.5 or 5.5, whatever, but give me one number. So actually we want to close our eyes from the reality, because in reality, the person knows it is going to change. So we need to plan for it. And for planning that, we need to understand that the task uh, follows a, something called a beta distribution where we have an optimistic scenario, the pessimistic scenario, and the most likely scenario. So we'll go ahead and we'll we will expose ourselves to our resource manager and say, OK, please give us your three time estimates. So that is, resource manager knows that he has conveyed his concern. That in the worst case, it can happen in the pessimistic scenario. In the best case, I can finish in the optimistic scenario. So now resource manager is, have been you know, uh, given a due respect as far as his judgment is concerned. And these are some statistical formula. I will not go into detail of this, because my objective of this session is to just show you how we can use this information and with a, some level of confidence, we can predict what will be the probability of finishing a project in a particular number of weeks. So I was trying to you know, uh, find a solution. So what I did, in Excel, 
Uh, I'll, I'll switch to Excel uh, uh, soon. In Excel, first, all the activity has been listed out here. This is the deterministic scenario for the duration. And these are the predecessor. And as you, all of you uh, may be knowing, it's early start, early finish, late start, late finish. And whenever the dates are matching, we say it's all our critical task. And in the deterministic scenario, the project duration comes out to be 47 weeks. I'll go ahead. And now I'll incorporate what my resource manager or the people who are going to execute this task have specified. Considering all the worst case scenario, the pessimistic scenario here, the optimistic scenario. With this, I'm going to model, and I'm going to find out what will be the probability that the project will be finished in a particular number of weeks, either 47, 48, 49, or 50. Somebody can say, sir, do one thing. Add up all this, consider only the pessimistic scenario. That's the safest approach. But it's something like this. All the tasks happening here, as per this number, will be 17%. That's a 0.17. So the probability of the project finishing in, as per the, all the pessimistic scenario, will be 0.17 into 0.17 into 0.17 into 0.17 into, 0.17 into, 0.17 into, 0.17 into, into number of tasks. That's a very, very small probability. So we really didn't know how to plan for that very, very worst case scenario. Same thing applies for the best optimistic scenario as well. That 0.17 raised to this, this number of tasks is the best case scenario. So actual numbers lie somewhere in between. So I want to find out a range in which this project will be finished. And that and we are going to do it through a small simulation. So from deterministic scenario, I change the duration to follow a beta distribution, which normally task follows, based on the parameters called alpha and beta. Again, that's the mathematical part. We'll not go into detail of that. But what this formula does here, it converts this duration into a random numbers. They actually are generated from the beta distribution. And those numbers, those duration will be between 3 and 14, with around uh, 60 or 65 percent this number happening, 70% this one, and 70% this one. So as you can see now, the numbers have changed here. So this is the one of the snap of the simulation. So earlier, original deterministic scenario was this one. Now the change numbers are this one. And you can see here, the duration with this scenario has gone to 56 weeks. Yes? Ah, that's a formula of, uh, uh, for beta distribution which is worked out based on A, M, and B. Maybe at the end of the presentation, I have one slide, which I'll show the formula. Yes. Yeah. So basically, uh, for us, the input is three time estimate. And based on, based on that, we worked out alpha and beta. And based on that, we worked out the beta distributed duration. Ah, uh, no, no, no. It has, see, you can see this. And that's what the beauty of uh, 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 this technique is. And, and we'll see that live when I do the simulation on my machine. So when we convert a deterministic scenario into a probabilistic scenario to incorporate the uncertainty, not only the project duration is going to change, but to your surprise, the, num the, the activities which are supposed to be on critical path, they no longer remain on critical path for 100% for of the time. I'm using this word for 100% of the time, because you'll see at the end of the simulation that some of the activities remain on, on the critical path, but some of the acti activity has been reduced. So now, yes. Yes. Yes, we have to, like the way we update the plants, so, so, so my logic is that when we make a plan, keep in mind that the thing, things are not going to happen exactly as per the plan. So give some room for each of the tasks. So now, with this uh, scenario, uh, having a beta distributed project duration, can you guess what will the probability that the project will finish in 50 weeks? Early it was planned 47 weeks. Without considering simulated scenario, we'll be 100% confident if the original plan was 47 weeks, and if we are coding in 50 weeks, we are, we are very safe because we are keeping three weeks of cushion. Right? That's, that's what the understanding is. 
But let's wait for a few minutes. Let's run the scenario and then see how much is the percentage or probability of finishing in 50 weeks. Because one of the run of simulations showed us that it can go up to 56 weeks as well. So now let me switch to the Excel and just help you out to understand how to model this. Uh, in my Excel sheet, we will not try to read the numbers because uh, that's not the intention. Intention is just to see the, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me try. I'll just increase the, this one. Yeah, no, that's it. Right. So the same things, uh, but without the simulated scenario. So here, as you can see, uh, in this duration, I have kept the formula that's it is equal to the M, M column. Now I'm going to change from deterministic to probabilistic. Here the formula is. Okay, I'll, I'll give the formula in a, in a, in a, in a simpler way. That's, uh, I think, at yeah, that's, yeah, these are the formulas. Okay, uh, so let me convert this uh, deterministic scenario into a probabilistic scenario only for the one of the task, that is Z. Now you can just keep on observing this number. I'm just running this simulation for only for one task. So sometimes six, sometimes seven, because the range is from five to seven. That's what the range is. Now, if I change same thing for all the tasks, let's see what happens. And now, please keep observing these numbers and also these tags where we have identified the critical path. And also, let's see, uh, keep a watch on this part. That's the end of the project. That's 42 weeks. Right now, it's 48. It can be 44, 43, 48, 52, 49, and so on and so forth. Because this number, this duration is changing based on the beta distribution. Be because we have given a system a three time estimate and we have asked the system to generate a durations which are beta distributed between these values with most likely as 10. Yeah, it's an NM distribution. So because we are just creating a scenarios, let's say if we are going to run this project for 500 times, how many times I will get a project duration which is finished within 50 weeks? Simulation, yeah. So in this in this uh, 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 formula, if you keep on pressing delete button again and again, it will keep on generating random numbers. So that's what I'm doing, delete button. Now, yeah. So now this simulation uh, is not of much use because unless we capture all the scenario, it's not going to be any help. So now let me show you how I'm going to capture this and how I'm, we are going to use, make use of that information. Yes. <laughs> so now, now what I'm doing, I'm, I have started capturing scenarios. So what I'm capturing, I'm only capturing this column. That which were the critical tasks and what was my project duration at, in, in that scenario. So once one picture I captured with 43 weeks. Now let me keep on doing this for almost. And this counter, count 45, so, so that means I have 45 scenarios I generated. Just give me a minute, it will take only a, 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 a few seconds to reach up to say around a reasonable number.
Yeah, that's macro, which you know is basically running. So macro is running to gender those scenarios. So I'll just generate around 200 uh, scenarios, and based on the 200 scenarios, we'll take a call. Uh, what's the project duration? Yeah. So I did uh, simulated this project with these three time estimates uh, for 200 times, and I can see that this task H remain critical for 100% of the time. Task Y and Z remain 100% of the time. And if you have observed the network, they were the first and the last task. But in between, there were some tasks which were not critical earlier. They also become critical. For example, task S, uh, uh, sorry, TUV, that 31%, 31%, and so on. So they were not originally critical. But because of the project duration change or the task duration changing randomly, this became critical 31% of the time. This 31% of the time. And the original critical path where this task, task X, was critical, but it will be critical only 80% of the time. Now the question will come to your mind, uh, Dinesh, uh, we are not going to execute project 500 times or 1,000 times or 200 times. But the probability will work. Even in one of instance also, there will be a probability. So here, if I have to take a call, that if required project duration is 50 weeks, there's only 87% chance that the project with this scenario will finish in 50 weeks. So we have a 13% of risk if we commit for 50 weeks. If I commit for 47 weeks, fifty or 50 or less than 50. So if I commit 47 weeks, there's only 46% chance that the project will finish in 47 weeks. It's, it's a huge risk, right? It's a huge risk. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. So, sir, what happened? Like, the input comes in the form of a optimistic, most likely, and pessimistic scenario. Now, this beta distribution requires three parameters. Uh, sorry, two more parameters. That's called alpha and beta. They are like a uh, intermediate variable. So from al from uh, optimistic, most likely, and pessimistic, we convert into a alpha and beta. Let me display this formula. So you can see here, the alpha is worked out based on B, M, and A. A is the optimistic, B is the pessimistic, and M is the most likely. So just way to convert, like we can put directly a, M, and B into the formula. But in the Excel, it becomes easy because the Excel function has been defined with alpha and beta. Otherwise, in the, in the beta distribution, I have to model whole of this formula. So we are just transforming our three-time estimate into two parameters called alpha and beta, which are the statistical parameter of beta distribution. And then that beta distribution is generating those durations for our scenarios. <coughs> 